right, let's do our warm up and maybe a little bit of everything today. So feet hip width apart, toes straight ahead, sitting bones toward the floor, shoulders back and down. Get your core activated and lengthening up through the spine with those ribs toward it and up toward your heart. And then just relax your shoulders, reach your head up, spread out your toes, no gripping. Breathe deep and let the tension all go. And as you inhale, arms are reaching at shoulder level, keep the shoulders down though. Hands to your heart, elbows back, stretch out to the front, and exhale the hands behind you. Clasp your fingertips as you lengthen back through the top of your head and exhale over. So come into your forward bend and let your back start stretching a little bit more. Move your head around, move your neck, releasing tension. And then knees bent, chin in. Wind your way from the bottom of the spine back all the way up and lift your heart. So upper body back bends, shoulders down, chest high. And then inhaling, come up, releasing your arms. Take a moment just observing that yoga inner perspective of what's going on. And again, arms are reaching out, hands to your heart, all the way to the front, and exhale behind you, clasp the fingers the other way, and stretch your head back as you lift your heart. Pivot on over, exhaling into the forward position and lift your sitting bones. Take a moment and breathe. And then again, just knees bent, chin in as you wind your way back into the back bend in your upper body and relax. And after a few breaths, come on up and release. Again, just observe how your body is responding today. And we'll do our side stretch. Oh, let's do this. One arm out, one arm to your side, palm toward the ceiling, bring your hand over your head, and stretch, leaning to the side, no twisting. So make sure that shoulder stays back. Push the foot you're leaning away from down, get those ribs nice and stretched apart. And then inhale back up and release. Take a moment again. Notice how your body is maybe a little bit lopsided. So we'll have to do the other side. Arm out, palm to the ceiling, arm above your shoulder and stretch, then lean straight over to the side. So just let this hand slide along your leg as far as it wants to go while you push the other foot down. And reach out through your head and your hand. And then again, inhale to the top and release your arm. Take a moment once more, just observing how you're responding. And arms out, palms toward the ceiling, hands above your shoulders, clasp your elbows, bring them back next to your ears and stretch up and exhale into your twist. Take another breath. And as you exhale, pivot in your twist, coming into a forward position. And relax. Take a few breaths there. Keep your arms next to your ears. And then slowly work your way up, staying in the twist. And lift your heart. Pull your elbows back and shoulders down. And make sure you're gentle on that low back while you're twisting. And then inhale and come to the top. Exhale around to the center and switch your arms. And again, lengthen that spine apart to twist and go to the other side. And again, weight on both feet evenly, stretch and exhale over. And again, deepen as far as you'd like and relax. Tension out, just release any tightness anywhere. And then in the twist, slowly work your way up. And again, heart high, elbows back, and twist a gentle upper body back bend for while you're twisting. And then inhale and come up. Exhale around to the center. Bring your arms up, but keep your shoulders down. Find your extended mountain and just reach up through your head, down into your feet. And then pivoting forward, come all the way over into red dog. 
Just hang, let those arms dangle wherever they go. Lift your sitting bones, maybe straightening your knees, get a stretch on your legs. Pull in deeper if you like that low back stretch. And arms to the front, just hanging as you again wind from the bottom of your spine back up and into mountain pose. Take a moment, just feeling all that circulation through your spine after we've worked it in all its directions. So let's step a little wide and angle the feet slightly out. And then bend your knees toward your toes and bring your upper body straight down. So you're straight up and down through that torso. You're not leaning forward at the hip joint. This is called horse. So imagine you're riding a horse. So you're coming up and sinking down in the saddle, just like sometimes when you are riding through the woods and going a little too fast. And then we're going to bring the upper body into motion also. So bring your arms out, palms to the ceiling overhead, and then come back down. So arms go up and overhead, palms together, and then palms apart, coming back down as you sink those knees toward your toes, not beyond, upper body straight up and down. Inhaling, coming up, palms together, exhaling, coming all the way back down. And again, inhaling up, straightening the legs, looking overhead, exhaling, sinking, and coming down. So make sure those knees aren't going beyond your toes. We don't want to overwork the knees. Just allowing your upper body to be nice and straight. Breathing with it, inhaling as you stretch, exhaling as you come back, sinking down. And then one more time. And as you exhale, just relax. And straighten your knees. Turn the feet back to the front and come back into mountain pose. So a little bit more stimulation through the legs and hips and the upper body. And then again, we're gonna turn the toes just slightly out. Deep knee bends this time. So if your knees are an issue, don't go all the way. Just go to your knees and then stand back up. Otherwise, we're gonna go all the way to the floor as you come down and then stand back up. So again, exhaling down, inhaling back up, and find your pace, doing what's right for your body, either to the knees only, or all the way down, or somewhere in between, whatever works for your knees. And remember, those knees don't wanna go beyond your toes, so push the hips, sitting bones back behind you as you come down. And then as you're doing it, maybe a little faster because this is one of those Kundalini energy building ones. So exhaling and inhaling, just going however it's right for you. Breathing, maybe through the nose, particularly both inhaling and exhaling, kind of emphasizing it. And just a few more times, really getting all that motion going and circulation stimulated. And then the next time you're up, turn your feet forward and release back into mountain pose. And again, just notice more circulation going through you and what's happening through your feet, through your hips, through your whole body. And then let's inhale, arms out and up. Exhale and pivot over. Slide your hands up on your shins. Straighten and stretch that back. The chin in a little bit so the neck keeps stretching to you. Exhale back down. Palms together as you inhale. Keep looking at them as you bring them up. A little back bend. And again, exhale, pivot over. Take a moment there, just breathe and relax. Again, pull in maybe a little deeper. And release, arms toward the floor. And straighten your knees and your back, bring your arms at shoulder level, stretching out parallel to the floor. 
and pivot up. They should still be at shoulder level when you get there. Shoulders are down. And then hands together and to your heart and into mountain pose. Just take a moment and notice how that's stimulated different things. And then hands together again. Inhale it toward the ceiling. Thumbs a little back, chest high. Exhale and come on over. Just follow the process of your hands moving toward the floor. And come on all the way into our child's pose transition. Hips on your heels, hands, palms up, and forehead toward the floor. Take a moment there in your position. Knees together and get a good low back stretch or apart your choice. And then inhaling, let's come up and let's go into a cross leg position this time. So sitting bones a little behind you as always. Get cushioning there if you need it. And remember, we're creatures of habit, so go ahead, switch those legs around so that we're not in our habitual position. Cup your hands around your knees. We're going to pivot at the hips and bring your chest forward, chin forward toward the floor. Keep stretching your neck. And then we're going to keep that pelvis as our focus. And we're going to rotate over to one side and lean looking up. Come all the way to the back with the chest high and then lean to the other side and come back to the front. So we're going to circle around that way a couple of times. Just inhaling as you lift your heart to the back and exhaling as you come around to the front. And just slowly going through your range of motion, kind of feel what's going on through that lower body in particular also what's happening as you expand the chest, breathing in and exhaling out. And then the next time you're forward, just pause at the front. And of course, we're going to balance the body and go the opposite direction. So again, over to the side with the side, looking up as the back, exhaling over to the other side and finishing at the front. And again, just a few circles around really working that whole hip and pelvis area through that circuit, as well as opening the lungs as you breathe in and emptying them as you come forward. So one more circuit as you go around, breathing and moving with your body. And when you get to the front again, just pause. On an inhalation, sit back up and release your legs out to staff position. So take a moment there, make sure those sitting bones are comfortably behind you or propped up. And we're going to open the hips just a little more because we're going to be using them. So bend your one leg and put the foot on the opposite thigh, let the knee come down. See how that's going today. If that's really tight and up and you want it a little bit easier, bring the leg over, but keep the knee and toes up wherever you are. And as always, if you have a little more padding behind you, that also can help to release that hip pelvis area a little bit more. Hand on the knee if you want, just add weight, but don't push. There's no need to accelerate anything. Just let it happen because remember, if you tense and tighten, they don't release. You want to just relax and let things stretch. Remember your foot and knee into your hands or wrap your arms around and we're going to rotate back and forth for the rotator of your hip. So that outside has that ball and joint and we want to make sure it's nicely warmed up and lubricated so it can move. If you love and that's a little bit easy, you can lift it higher or closer which will make it more intense. So don't go there if you've got hip issues. And then releasing that leg, notice that we are now again unbalanced. So let's do the other side. Foot up to your thigh. And again, sitting bones behind you, knee coming down as far as it wants to. Leg over to the side if you're wanting a little bit more opening and relax. 
So remember, knee and toes on that front leg stay up. This knee comes as far toward the floor as it wants to go. Just let it relax. Don't forget to breathe because breathing is really important. And again, you can have that hand just adding a little weight, but not pressure, allowing that knee maybe to go a little deeper into the position when it's ready, but don't force it. And again, bringing our leg up, wrapping around or just holding on, bring it back and forth in that rotation, side to side, warming up that hip rotator as much as it wants to. And again, more if you love it or not, always a personal choice because yoga is always what? A personal practice, yeah. And then release that foot and notice again a little more stimulation through that hip area. And let's just go into butterfly for a moment just because. So sitting bones behind you, knees out to the side, clasp your hands under the toes, pull those heels in, and then releasing, bring the hands behind you, right under your shoulders, fingertips or palms down, whatever works for you. And a little press into the hands and lengthen through that front of your body, up through that middle of your torso. And that sometimes helps to release those inner thigh muscles and let you stretch those knees maybe a little further toward the floor. But again, don't force it, just let it happen. And then bring your hands back to the center, lift your knees, bring your legs out in front, back into staff position. Just take a moment, feel the core activated, shoulders still relaxed, and don't forget to move. We're gonna go up on our hands and knees and into a position called pigeon. So pigeon is pretty intense, remember, on the hips. So be gentle as much as you need to. And if you want to have a pillow nearby, that sometimes helps too. So you want to start with your wrists, elbows, and shoulders lined up, and your knees right under your hips. And then we're going to take the right knee forward between your hands and slide the left leg back. So you're getting a good hip flexor stretch on the front of that left leg. So if you've got hip flexor injury, Sandy, don't be too stretched out there. And then move the right knee over to the edge of the mat and bring that heel maybe a little bit further forward as much as shin parallel to the body, if that works for you. So yeah, that bent knee, is working the hip rotator, and the back leg is working the hip flexor. So both your hip areas are being worked on this one. Chest forward and up, looking up. Nice little upper body back bend. And then if you want to release a little bit of tension through those hips, bring your elbows down to the floor, sliding your hands forward, and just lower your upper body slightly. So what you want to attempt to achieve is keeping those hip bones parallel to each other, sinking down toward the mat. So yeah, you won't probably ever get them all the way and this perpendicular shin probably for most of you won't ever work, but if you're really flexible, those things could happen. And just take a moment to breathe. It's best not to bring your head all the way to the floor because that tends to overwork things in your hips and legs and knees. So just chest forward, looking forward, just a slight upper body back bend, they're kind of sphinxy upper body position. And then bringing your hands back under your shoulders, we're gonna go a little bit deeper. So chest forward and look overhead, a little bit deeper back bend, making a little bit more work through that pelvis area as that left hip sinks toward the floor. So take a moment and breathe. You can have padding if you need to under the hip that's up. And then to release, we're gonna bring the right knee back and the left knee up, coming back into table. And then just sink back into an extended child's pose and relax. Take a moment to breathe. 
And of course, you know that we're going to balance the body and do the same thing to the other side. So coming back up into table to start, get that spine supported with the core, get the sitting bones and crown reaching away, circle your wrists if you need to, and we're going to take the left knee forward and the right leg back this time. So again, just thinking, keeping those hips as straight as you can going down. And then bringing the left knee way over to the side and letting the foot come up more toward the front of the mat as much as it wants to for your body. And again, hip bones right across from each other, not skewing out. And just let this right hip this time sink for that hip flexor if that's working in your body, but not overdoing. Knee out to the side for that hip rotator on the left leg this time. And you can keep moving that foot forward a little bit incrementally if you want to and the knee isn't overworking on it. Up to you, remember personal practice. Crown to the ceiling, chest forward and up. Stretch through the back of your neck. And again, if you like releasing, and slide those hands forward, elbows right under your shoulders. And again, chest forward and crown slightly up as you let that back hip especially sink down more toward the floor. Take a moment and breathe just gently. And again, it's always personal practice, whatever's right for you. So sliding your hands back. We're going to go a little deeper if you want. So remember, be gentle when you need to. Chest forward, looking overhead, but keep stretching even the back of your neck as you're in that position. And just let those hips sink toward the floor as much as they will. Take a breath. Exhale tension. And then again, pressing into your hands. Slide the left knee back and the right knee back up into table. And again, let's release a nice forward bend through those hips and forehead down. And this time you can bring your hands next to your feet if you want to and totally relax. Deep breath, exhaling tension. And then as you inhale, sit up and come back into staff position. So take a moment there, press out through the bottoms of your feet, up through the crown, feel your core, notice your hips a little bit more stimulated, and we're going to do a little twist. So bring your right foot to the inner left thigh, knee out to the side, and just relax. And then bend your left knee and bring that heel near your hip on the left side, as much or as little as you want. So take a moment there, lengthen up, bring your hand to the opposite knee and the other arm out straight in front of you. Stretch up through the spine, get it separated to twist, and then exhale, follow your hands around, turning hips, ribs, shoulder, everything going into the twist as well as your neck. Hand to the floor close to your body, or you can put it on the bottom of your foot if you want a little push there. And lengthen up. Exhale, deepen. So you're turning hips, ribs, shoulder, everything, looking a little bit further behind you as you go into that twist. So you may have the hip up off the floor on the side, you're turning toward that spine. Take a breath, just deepen it. As much or as little, remember, personal practice as you want. And then arm back up to shoulder level and follow it back around to the center. Releasing your hands and your legs. And once you're back in staff position, just notice your spine a little bit more stimulated and what's going on internally with that twist energy. And we're gonna, of course, balance the body. So left foot to your inner right thigh, knee up to the side, sitting bones nicely back. Bend the right knee, bring that heel back near your hip. And again, stretch up as you do that, and opposite hand to the knee. Arm out in front, lengthen through your spine so you can twist and exhale, following your hand around behind you. 
hand close to your body on the floor or on the bottom of that foot, always your choice. And again, lengthen up, breathing, exhale, and deepen. Twisting as much or as little as your body likes today. Take a breath, exhale, tension. And again, bring your arm up, follow it back around to the center, release your arms and your legs, and come back into staff. Feel your hips a little more stimulated, your spine as well, all that twist energy moving through you, maybe up into your head, because it's almost relaxation time, but not quite. So we're going to go all the way onto our backs. So core active, just roll slowly down, lower back, lower ribs, shoulder blades, and shoulders. And just take a moment there, reclined integration. Just let your body soften and sink into that surface beneath you. Exhaling tension. And we're going to do our lower back twist, chiropractic twist. So bring your hands, palms up, out from your shoulders. Sitting by slightly toward your heels with that back down toward the floor. Bend your right knee. Put your foot on top of the left thigh. We're going to roll all the way to the left side. Keep your head on the floor. You need a pillow keep, to keep it there. That's okay. Hands come together on the floor in front of you, the knee all the way down. Take your left hand on your right knee. Hold it on the floor for your lower back twist. Bring your right arm up above the shoulder, palm open. Keep that palm up toward the ceiling as you lower the hand behind you right at shoulder level toward the floor and keep turning, looking toward that hand so your whole body moves into the twist. So remember, the more your knee is down, the more your lower back is twisting. Be gentle there if you need to. Keep your head turning and neck area twist. So again, be gentle if that's necessary for your body. And just let the hand come as far toward the floor as it wants to, but gravity brings it. Don't force it. That's the middle back twist. And if your arm is up in the air, just relax and gravity will slowly bring the arm further toward the floor when your body is ready. And remember, the other thing you can do is exhale a lot because that helps to release those ligaments along your spine into the twist. So just breathe and relax, deepen as much or as little as your body wants on this side. And of course, hold it longer on your own, but right now, just release that knee, roll onto your back, and slide the foot near the other one so that we can twist the other direction. So again, straighten things out. Press your sitting bones toward your heels and your back down. Bend your left knee, foot to the right thigh. Hands, palms up right at shoulder level. And again, keeping your head down on the floor, roll over to the side. Hands together, you're on your hip and your shoulder, and the left knee is on the floor. Right hand holding the knee, and look at your left hand as you bring it up. And keep that palm up toward the ceiling. Keep that arm right at shoulder level, not up by your head or down by your foot. But straight out to the back, letting gravity open you into that middle back twist. Head turn, neck twist knee to the floor, lower back twist, do what's right for you. Keep breathing, keep relaxing, releasing those ligaments, letting that whole spine release as far into the twist as it wants to go. Always personal practice, do what's right for your body. And of course, hold it longer on your own, but right now it's time for our relaxation. So let go of the knee and slide the foot near the other one. Turn your hands, palms up and bring them near your hips. Shoulders down and relax. Chin slightly toward your chest, but you don't need to press that back of your neck down to the mat. You just want it in its natural curves. Let your belly move as you breathe. Exhale, tension. And just let your body soften and sink deep into that surface beneath you. Exhale, tension. 
letting any tightness, especially through the hips and pelvis, but anywhere that you feel it, just let it go. Soften your legs, your belly, your torso, your shoulders. Release your jaw, your neck, your face, everything. Just let your body sink deep into that earth's surface and let the earth support you. And as you relax your body, just release thoughts of your body from your mind. And know, of course, that as you do, other thoughts will come to you. Just let those thoughts go as well, drifting away as easily as your breath. And as you breathe more deeply, and your body sinks further and grows heavier deep into that earth embrace, let your thoughts just drift away like your breath and allow your awareness to release both your body and your mind. Focus inward, relaxing completely, deepening that awareness of the peace within. Fill your body with peace. Fill your mind with peace. And just take moments to be peace. Of course, if you can keep relaxing longer, feel free to stay relaxed as long as you have time. If it's time to begin preparing for the rest of your day, just begin drawing energy and awareness back to the breath, to the wind, to your body. And as you breathe more deeply, just move your body gently, however feels good for you today. And when you're ready for your yoga hug of appreciation, Sitting bones towards your heels, back pressing down. Bring those heels to your hips and your knees toward your feet. Wrap your arms around for that appreciative yoga hug. Let your body know you appreciate its work with you in yoga every day and the work your body does for you at all times as well. And when you're ready to release your hug and appreciation moment, bring your feet to the floor. Roll to your side and sit back up, getting ready for whatever's ahead for you today. Thanks for joining me.